Hey guys, it's me, and you know what? I'm not even supposed to be making a video right now. It's like 20 minutes till Shabbat, but I honestly, oh my gosh, it's five. Let me just spit this out really quick. Get rid of your iPhones. Just get rid of your freaking iPhones. I'm serious. I, I can't handle this anymore. Three people I know just in the last week have had deep vein thrombosis, and two of those three, it turned into pulmonary embolism. And I just read an article in the... Uh, Wise Traditions quarterly released by the Weston A. Price Foundation, and I apologize, I don't have it on me, because so I can't tell you the author. They were talking about a study done on people with a, quote, smartphone. It didn't say iPhone specifically, but I know that that's what they were talking about, because iPhones are constantly sending and receiving. They act as little micro uh, antenna, unlike other cell phones that are just only receiving when you're on the phone. But an iPhone, actually, if you're just using it, it's emitting more radiation than the old clamshell. The old little flip phones, those emit very little radiation. And they were talking about how your red blood cells would do this. And it's called Rolo style. And you guys, I don't know if you can see. Let's see if I can zoom this in. Those red blood cells, they're sideways, like coins. They're like rolls of coins. And within minutes of either not just using these phones and pads, pads and phones, and, and of course, if you have a laptop on your lap, these, this is what happens to your red blood cells. <clears throat> now, even carrying it in a bag, okay? And, and for some reason, elderly people were far more susceptible. And I, and I asked myself when I saw this, would this increase your chance of blood clots? And I know... Um, <clears throat> I know for a fact that the two people that it turned into a pulmonary embolism, they are all about the, the iPad or the other type of tablets. I mean, constantly, tablet, tablet, tablet. One of those people was recovering from a surgery, and so it uh, was probably literally uh, she was having, she had had a C-section, and so they believe the clot originated from there, and also clots can originate from, you know, just sitting a long time. Uh, so surgery can increase your chance, sitting can increase your chance, and also, you know, going in an airplane because of sitting and differences in air pressure. But add to that this effect that these wireless devices are having on us. Now, you guys know I turn my Wi-Fi off. You know I tune my guitar to 432 hertz. <clears throat> I also got rid of my iPhone. I mean, it's sitting here. It's it's not on me, though. No. Make sure I turn the sucker off. Oh my gosh. It's not even hooked up to Verizon anymore. I don't even want to pay Verizon money because they have child themed pornography on demand through their cable service and they don't pay taxes. So anyway, my husband has a phone because he's required to, but we're about to get rid of his iPhone as well and just switch to, you know, an old clamshell pay as you go, which is going to bring our cell phone bill down, by the way, from about 150 a month for two phones on the lowest gig plan. Um, to, you know, 45 a month for him to have his one cell phone. And me, you know, I can carry an unactivated cell phone. So it's not going to, from what I understand, it's not going to be constantly transmitting. <clears throat> and I can still di dial 911 from it if need be. But really, I don't honestly usually carry that. So I'll probably just get another pay as you go. But <laughs> whatever. But this is what's happening, and um, th I'm going to put a link to this article for you guys, but yes, it can be reversed. You know, after time, these things do go away. Now, I am not advocating whatever this device is that they show, um, but here's what you're supposed to look like. I don't know about this device. I will read about the device, and I will think about it, and if you want to ask me about it later, I'll be glad to, you know, tell you that, but really... Getting a Wi-Fi that can be turned on and off and only turning it on when absolutely necessary. Running Ethernet. We run Ethernet under our carpet through our whole house. Uh, you could go an extra step and turn your router off at night. You can also, you know, get rid of um, your box springs because you don't want these metal rods under you while you sleep. You know, uh, but really getting rid of the smartphones. Just get an old clamshell. And, you know, play with your kids, not with your phones. You know, like, and my kid, uh, he's got a Kindle. He's had it for about a year. I can't not get rid of the thing. Nobody wants it. There's 500 of them for sale on Craigslist. And we, we try to get rid of our Xbox because I said, you know what, guys, we need to start being more creative and not waste our time. You can't even sell an Xbox 360 with a Kinect. 
and like 50 games. Can't even get rid of it. These things are being shoved on us. They're sucking our life away. And I don't know why I'm hovering on this guy. <laughs> but this is what our blood cells are supposed to look like. And I found this um, article through the national uh, ncbi.nim.nih, national, national Institute of Health. And sorry, I'm talking so fast, but this is like Shabbat. But I, I consider this like, this is like an emergency, okay? Local increase in red blood cell aggregation, and that's what that picture was, can trigger deep vein thrombosis. So here's the deal, guys. <clears throat> deep vein thrombosis usually starts in your leg, and it can go to your lungs, and that becomes a pulmonary embolism. And it can also go to your brain and become a stroke or your heart and become a heart attack. And I talked to my doctor. I went in for a physical after the first person I knew got one, a 27-year-old, seemingly healthy person <clears throat> who just happened to, you know, have a job where she sits a lot, but not the person who, you know, was just recovering from surgery or anything like that. Yes, this particular person was on birth control, but who's not at 27? It's a female. I, you know, I was, or no, I wasn't, not at that time, but anyway, <clears throat> And, and I asked my doctor specifically, like, how do I know? Because sometimes I get these little twinges in my leg. First of all, it's going to be a pain that's not going away. You may have swelling on that side. So if you have one leg that's more swollen than another and you feel like you have a pulled muscle on that leg, that is an emergency situation. Now, go as soon as you can. If for some reason you ignore that, um, or you may not have the swelling also, but it's going to be usually a pain right up behind your knee or close to behind your knee. This is what my doctor told me. And if, if for some reason it goes to your lungs, you'll feel a pressure in your chest. You may feel chest pain. The one lady I just talked to, she had it after her cesarean. <clears throat> Guarantee you though, she had a pad on her lap while she was healing. She uh, felt down one side, like as if, like they say you feel when you have a heart attack, but for her, it was also a pulmonary embolism. And um, on one of the women, uh, she had an elevated pulse. Now she had two clots and her pulse, her resting pulse was like in the hundred, above 120. So there are symptoms, you know, and me, I do my push-ups every day and I get a little twinge in my calf and I go, oh my gosh, I'm going to have, you know, a DVT. Uh, and I, and I, and I asked also these women, I did my own little study, um, <laughs> you know, because one uh, woman is overweight out of the two women and then there's one man uh, and the other one is not. And so one is sedentary, the other one um, or may be sedentary, but at least has a job that requires that. The other one, you know, uh, she basically... Um, is a cardio freak, skinny as a rail, runs daily. The third one is a male, also in his early 30s. He has an active job working outside. So he, and he lives in Florida, so he's going to have a good, probably a decent vitamin D status. Um, he was recovering as well. So he was laid up in bed because of an injury. Guarantee you, I haven't heard back yet from my source on this. I'm waiting to find out. Guarantee you though, just a guess, he had a pad or a laptop or a phone with him while he was in bed recovering. So think of these compounding situations, okay? Compounding. So imagine you've got your, and deep, further down into this, um, <clears throat> further down in this uh, article, they do talk about micro circulatory. So you've got your arteries and everything and, you know, and your veins, but you've also got capillaries and capillaries are really small. And your smallest capillary, I learned this at Florida State in the cardiovascular physiology lab where I was a directed independent student. I worked with master students. I was just an undergrad at the time, but your capillaries are one red blood cell in diameter. Okay. They're not that big. And so you're, and so micro flow, you, you know what I'm saying here? Like micro flow throughout your body. If your blood cells are stacked all together, I mean, I guess they could all fit through in a line, but they're not just sticking in. I mean, look at this. And Think about the capillaries in your brain and your eyes and your feet and think about over a long period of time. Think about that compounding with, hey, I just had a surgery. I mean, 
This is serious, you guys. So, and I have to tell you, since I deleted like 90% of my friends off of Facebook, I've added a couple of people back just, you know, because like, like Dr. Seneff from MIT, I was like, what am I an idiot? How could I delete her? She's like <laughs> a genius. Um, and I added, like, I tried to add Melissa Melton back in <laughs> morning mind back. I'm like, ah, oh, what am I doing? But, and some of my like deep friends, you know, but seriously, a comp, I forget what I was saying. I digressed, but oh my gosh, you're, you're recovering from a surgery. You're going to be at risk for a clot anyway. Then you're a female and you're on birth control on top of that. Then you're sitting there with your iPad. I'm telling you, I could not find anything online about an increase in incidence of these things. But if you have a degree in biostatistics or you understand that or you can figure that out, here's a research study for you. Because I think it's really weird that I know three people that this has just happened to. And we're in a society now where everybody suddenly has a smartphone and everybody has Wi-Fi. So just something to think about. It's a health alert. From Heather Davis with EdenCultures.com. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. And please subscribe and sign up for the newsletter. This is important stuff here, guys. This is important stuff. Peace.